Welcome back to my channel. I am extremely excited about the upcoming game. Now, let me explain the reasons behind my excitement for this game. I will talk about the details later in the video. So, the game has a lot of themes and ideas I am interested in. How it will distinct itself from other games and want to see more gameplay of how the combat and story lore it unfolds. Today, I want to highlight 15 minutes of new gameplay trailer for Banishers, Ghosts of New Eden. Although, it's mostly just cinematic story cutscenes with some combat gameplay reveal trailer. In this video, we will be exploring the gameplay mechanics, discussing the game's length, and revealing some exciting leaked information about the game's choices. So, without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. Before that, for some reason, the game has been now delayed to next year February 2024. I will discuss everything about that in the last part of the video. Right now on Steam page the game set to release on the 13th of February 2024. You can wishlist the game for now, but I would wait until the game reviews comes out and then make my decision to buy or wait for it to go on sale and give it a try. Now, for those who are new here, let me give you an overview of what Banisher's Ghost of New Eden is about. Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden is an upcoming immersive action RPG with a heart-wrenching story about life, death, love, and sacrifice, which is developed by French studio called Don't Nod and published by Focus Entertainment. In this awesome game, you get to be Red, a cool Scotsman living in 1695 North America. But Red isn't just any ordinary guy. He's a banisher, like a witcher but instead of hunting monsters, he hunts ghosts. How cool is that? But wait, there's more. Red has a personal mission too. His beloved partner, Antia, recently had a tragic fate. Now, Red's main goal is to find a way to bring her back to life. Now, Banishers isn't just about action role-playing game. It's also a choice-based adventure, which is totally in line with the developers. You'll get to make decisions that shape the story adding a touch of delicacy to all the violence. The developers have only made some action games before this, their first game is Remember Me and the second one is Vampire. They also worked on Twin Mirror and Life is Strange 1 and 2 series, all of which had serious flaws. They also released a visual novel game called Harmony the Fall of Reverie in 2023. Furthermore, on October 31st their single-player platform game called Juicent is going to release, which is already out by the time this video is published. The review for this game on Steam, right now sitting at very positive. But, I will recommend you to give it a try, if you have Xbox Game Pass. Now coming back to Banisher's Ghost of Eden. This game feels so weird for me, because of the gameplay and the story, feels completely detached from one another. I'm very into the setting and story but the gameplay looks like it's from some another generic action role-playing game. To be honest, exactly how I feel about the game. I feel like I've played this type of game a dozen times already. But, I am really interested in the choice of killing to save your loved ones. Hopefully, the bond and relationship of the couple is well done so the choice feels meaningful. It's always a great idea to a point at one of the most extensive, but I was shocked at how bloated it going to be. Now, coming to the combat. The combat is actually really good once you get the hang of it. If you just jump in and don't give it a solid chance you will think the combat is clunky, yet give it some time and you start to see it's actually really good. The combat in Banishers incorporates a balanced blend of light and heavy attacks, skillful dodges, and effective blocks. You can switch to Antia in combat. Switching to her in combat opens up new possibilities, she's still melee focused, uses her bare hands to attack. Red possesses a health bar that requires careful management and replenishment. However, Antia does not possess such a life bar. Instead, her vitality lies within the realm of magic. Red must unleash a flurry of attacks to build up Antia's mana bar. Once charged, they can then unleash a devastating damage to nearby enemies. You can switch to Antia at any time outside of combat, as she's the vital key to solving some relatively basic environmental puzzles such as lining up glowing glyphs to trigger a jump across chasms. But Antia is also a sort of spirit detective and can inspect spectral dust for clues to what has happened to the people of this place. Gaining new information not only fleshes out these ghost stories, but any scrap of intel could also prove crucial when faced with the big decision that will seemingly occur at the end of each mission. There are multiple abilities, upgrades, and crafting is also in the game. The trailer also showcased some of the different skill trees included in the game, and how you can upgrade your abilities for both characters. A mix of combat styles is available with the abilities of both characters, including teleportation and spectral damage. Both the characters can also be upgraded by a skill tree, especially Antia. 
The animations of the combat is what I don't like, which is the entirety of the combat because without animations it wouldn't exist visually, only on a technical scale, but you wouldn't see it. So the issue is the way the game did the combat animations wise. This game looks like God of War 2018, but not of that level of details and polish. Even the combat is generic style mix of light and heavy attacks combination. But there are some parts where I definitely pick up God of War 2018 vibes. With that third person shoulder camera view, the gameplay and game loop, the aesthetics, the environments, the map design, it's just very heavily story and dialogue driven. What I mean is that initially, it may not be immediately apparent. It can feel a bit janky, leaving you feeling lost and confused. As the story progresses further, you'll understand why I am comparing this game to God of War 2018 game. So I'm a man now. Like you? No. We are not men. We are more than that. The responsibility is far greater. It, it spoke her name with just one voice. Thanks, Ken and Kate both accused. Is anyone in these down woods innocent? Then it were real. This beast. How did I miss you on my travels through the woods? Because it did not want you. It wants your sister. You gave them dog whistles. You sent them to die. Those with metal would have reached camp and had to use them too. Those who died won't need feeding. I can confidently say that while it may not be the absolute best, it is undeniably a remarkably unique and meticulously crafted experience. So, now for the game's actual delay happened because of due to the crowded end of the year game release calendar, which was confirmed by both Don't Nod CEO Oscar Gilbert and Focus Entertainment Managing Director John Burt. The decision made by them was understandable considering that November month is daunting with big triple a game releases like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, the Accusa like a Dragon Gaiden the man who erased his name, Persona 5 Tactica, Grand Blue Fantasy vs Rising, and finally Robocop Rogue City. Now, I know Robocop is not a big triple, a budget game, but I love Robocop movies so much that I watched the movies like 20 times already. I always liked the Alex Murphy character as a Robocop which the first movie released back in 1987, following the sequel released in 1990, and the third part releasing in 1993, one year after I was actually born. Now, what I know about the actual delay is, because, in October, we have Sony's big game from Insomniac, Marvel's Spider-Man 2 and we have Remedy Entertainment, Alan Wake 2, so, Don't Nod Entertainment decided not to go head-to-head -head with the huge AAA studios, and overshadowed by these games, hence they decided to delay the game to February 2024. Furthermore, in February 2024 we have big games like Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth both will release in the same month. We already know that Rocksteady has killed the game by making the pretty much dead on arrival. No one in the gaming community expecting anything after watching the gameplay reveal trailer which downstreamed by the community fans. Overall, this game feels like a mix of The Witcher and The God of War 2018. So if you enjoy those titles, it's probably worth checking out. I'd have saved her. I was just like you. Cold, selfish, afraid of my own heart. And the woman I loved died for it. Everything I did, I did so that you... I dare because I care. Enough. Look about you. You brought this curse upon yourselves. Falls to me to lift it. Maybe they're not ready. Broken hearts need time to heal. If ever they heal. Mumble all you want, I regret nothing. The curse struck, and I alone saw the danger. I acted. And now it is I who must act. <laughs> Evil spirit, I punish you, great tormentor, 
I banish you. 